In this tutorial, I'm just going to demonstrate some steps in building a website in Muse. So, um, the theme of this website will be a chocolate shop. So, in Muse, I'm going to start with a new site. I'm choosing the desktop layout, and I'm just going to accept the defaults there at the moment. As you can see, it gives me a master page and a home page. So, as always with Muse, we use the master page to set up uh, site defaults and the navigation. So, I'm going to set up the header, the footer, uh, some uh, background sort of uh, colors, <coughs> and uh, the navigation system here. So. I've decided I'm going to use a pink and brown stripe in the background. So I'm going to go to Browser Fill and add a background image for the Browser Fill. Now, the pattern I have is done in Photoshop and it's just this pink and uh, purple uh, stripe. So if I put that in, then yeah, that that's my basic background is set up there. Um, I may want to put something that uh, sort of sits on the page, uh, maybe something like this with a uh, fill color, maybe even set that to a sort of a Transparency, something something like that maybe might look okay. Um, so that's my uh, background colors set up. <clears throat> I'm going to make a title somewhere in the header, and I want to use uh, web fonts so. Um, in fact, I've I've got some web fonts here that I quite like, but let me just show you again. Um, if I go to the Add Web Fonts, and in the filter, I have the different families. Um, we have sans serif, serif fonts, slab serif, script, gothic fonts, mono spaced, handwritten, or decorative. Um, in decorative. I found uh, a, f a set of uh, a font here that I quite liked, um, which I can't actually find at the moment. But look, it doesn't matter. I, I'm thinking I quite like. What was that one I just saw? Ah, Big Fish. Yeah, I, I quite like this Big Fish font. I think I'm going to use that for my chocolate shop. Now, as it happens, I've already installed that one. So I'm just going to go to Big Fish and put Charlie's Chocolate Shop. And set that up a bit. And maybe even go with a sort of a darker version of my background color. Yeah, so rather than black, <coughs> I've just darkened up that background color. It, that, that should sit nicely on this page. I could go even maybe a little darker. Um, usually when you use decorative fonts, you combine them with much more plain fonts. So uh, I'm going to uh, Use let's see where's where are my plain fonts hmm okay I'm going to go and look for a nice plain font um, I'm going to filter with the sans serif fonts and I quite like. Quite like this source 
Sans Pro. So I'm going to grab that one. And so I'll use my big fish for headings and it's taking a little time. I've kept this bit out of the middle. Okay, so let's say Charlie's Chocolate Shop. Where is that source? Source Sans Pro, and we have a whole family of fonts there with Source Sans. Let's go for regular and see what that looks like. Right, we're going to take it down in size, and maybe this is a time to <coughs> give it a little bit of horizontal spacing. Mm, not sure about that, maybe too much. There. So with that I've controlled the the um, I've set up the look for my typography. Okay, so I need to be consistent with that. Uh, I'm going to put a logo in here. So I have a logo that I've prepared. Oh, by the way, um, my logo if it's a JPEG, remember JPEGs don't have transparency. So unless I want to have it sitting on that gray background, I need to get rid of that gray. <clears throat> I'll do that in Photoshop. So I've got Photoshop open here. Let me just show you how we would um, get rid of that background. So here we have the chocolate logo. Uh, I'm just going to make a copy of this so I don't mess up the original and I'm going to turn the original off. Um, I want to select the background color. It's all one color so it should be pretty easy to select. I can just do it with the color range and select that background. Um, you, you can see with the fuzziness controller um, that that's not a clean selection. From about here onwards it's looking pretty clean in the preview so if I select that and hit the backspace then it will get rid of the background. Uh, Command D to deselect and now I can save this as a PNG format. And that will preserve uh, the logo. So I'm just going to replace the PNG file that I had there. OK, that's fine. Um, and back in Muse, now I'm going to place my logo PNG file. And there it is. Um, this is a chance where I, for me to use the crop tool to just trim it to where I want the uh, image to be. So I, I don't want a lot of empty transparent space. I just want to have a nice tight box around the logo and then I shrink it down to the size that I want. Be careful. Um, you can get some strange behaviors if you drop this over the the header. If you want it to be there then take the header down here. If you have something, an image like a logo going across both, it can lead to some confusion um, when you when you drop your, you know, if you drop things down here. So that's looking okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 
the next thing I'm going to do is put some footer uh, information down here. So in the footer, um, I might want to again put a, a, a panel or something that sort of shows that it's the footer. Um, just drawing a box in here and setting it to a, a, a sort of a darker shade, maybe something like this. And one thing I need to make sure is that this is actually ticked. If this is not ticked, then Muse thinks that this is just a box somewhere down the page, but doesn't know that it's in the footer. So just check if, if, um, if that footer is, is ticked, then it appears in the footer. Um, down here, we might have a contact address or, or um, a copyright notice. Copy R I G H T. HT 2015 Ken Newman. Uh, obviously, that's not a good color, so let's go with a brighter color. And um, now, if we need that copyright symbol, then just Look for it. Copyright symbol, <clears throat> and just grab uh, the little text character and paste it in. Obviously, I'm not going to leave it as Arial. I'm going to go to Source Sans Pro <clears throat> and yeah, maybe italicize it possibly or anyway, I'm reasonably happy with that. Um maybe even a little smaller. 14, I think 12 is okay for a copyright notice. Um I may want to put something like a, a, a Google Plus or a or a, um, a a Twitter follow symbol in to the footer. Then I can just put it in here. Charlie Chocolate Shop. And uh, let's see how many followers we get for our website. Um, okay, so that, that's the kind of thing that we would put into our, our footer. Um, we could also put uh, other navigation stuff in here. But I'm going to put the main navigation up here. Now, the navigation menus, we have uh, horizontal and vertical. For a web format, the horizontal works best. So I'm just going to pull a menu across here. Now, at the moment, we only have one page. So I'm going to go into the home page at the moment and place a couple of other pages. We want an about page. We want a gallery page, but in this case, I'm going to call it our, our chocolates. Or too long. With menus, we keep them short. Our chocs. And we also need a design, no, we need a contact page. We 
wants a design uh, reflection page and we want a code reflection page. So if we go back to the master page now we can see that the menu has dynamically uh, adjusted to take all of those pages in. I'm going to make sure that it's sitting nicely uh, in our header here. Uh, and I'm going to style the, um, the, the menu buttons. To be honest, I don't think I want a fill for this one. If I wanted a fill, I would change the colors, but I'm just going to make it no fill. Um, by the way, that's the normal state. I want to get rid of the rollover state and I want the active state to also be, actually I'm going to get rid of the active state also. So the background is now always clear. Um, going into the text, so if I click enough times I get the text, I'm not going to make it Georgia. Let me try my decorative font, the, the big fish. What does that look like for? It's not too bad, um, although the white is a bit hard to read. Um, I'm going to maybe go with that. Uh, I'm going to make them a bit larger. and change no, let's go into the text introduce a bit of that vertical uh, horizontal spacing that's a bit easier to read um, and I think I, I think that's okay I'm going to I'm going to go with that need to bring it in under the well I think I'm going to place it in yeah I think I'm going to place it in here and I also want to just change that color a bit so it's not white I'm going to make it a variation of the brown no it doesn't work let's go back to white just a sort of an off white that's fine that 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 will do fine um, And the more I look at it, the more I realize that I'm going to actually place it underneath here. It's, it's too much where it is. And I'm going to extend the header down a bit more. And I'm going to make this a chocolate brown. It's, it, the white isn't working for me. <clears throat> That's better. Mm, now, now the Charlie's chocolate shop doesn't look right. I think I'm going to have to make it also to be a the brown color. Okay, so um, I'm going to call that uh, done at the moment. Um, uh, and I'm going to start looking at my pages. So on the home page, let's see. What I would like to do is put a um, a nice chocolate image here. So I, I've got a couple of 
chocolate images. I've got a background one, background two, and a background three. So I'm just going to grab one of these for the moment and place it. It looks pretty good. Um, that's the kind of thing I would like to have on my landing page. Um, now, if I wanted to try something a little different, I could try a, um, a, um, a slideshow image here. So I'm, I'm going to go just grab a basic slideshow and drop it in here. And uh, put, say, the three images into the slideshow. So we, I can do that by just going add images to my slideshow and actually just grab all three of them and stretch them out. Okay, that's the full size of the image, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So that's fine. Um, actually, I'm not going to use this caption and I'm not going to use these forward buttons. So I'm, I'm deleting them. It should work fine without it. So what we should have here, the red line there, by the way, tells me that I'm in the center of my page here. So if I preview this now, every three seconds the image will dissolve. Um, I can set the speed of that dissolve in here if I wanted to. And you, know, you might say the transition speed. Actually, I'd like to make it fade a bit slower. So I'm going for a whole one second fade, autoplay. Um, 3.5 seconds, I'm finding a bit slow. Let's make it 2.5 seconds. So let's just preview that. There's the dissolve. It's a bit slower now. And the change is about two and a half seconds between each one. That's fine. That's, that's what I wanted to see. OK, what else might I put on my home page? Um, Let's assume that we'll have some introductory text here. Now, we don't want too much text. Um, for a web, uh, for desktop format, I would definitely have more than one um, text box across the, the, the page. Otherwise, it's too long to, to read across. Uh, so. I would have two or three columns here. Um, welcome to Charlie's. And we'll put some sample text in here. I'll just go and grab some sample text. So that's kind of enough. And I would use obviously not 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 use Arial um, color. I'll, I'll go with my default color there. We'll go with Big Fish for the heading. Um, I'm wondering whether actually that might be better. There's white text. Let's have a look at that. 
Mm, I think I'm going to have to make the background a bit darker if I want to use a, a white text there. It's possible. Um, once I get that set up as a as a sort of a standard paragraph, then it's easy enough to just copy that. I'm holding down the Alt key and dragging that across. Let's place it. Uh, place it here. Um, I can easily set up some guides if I want to try and get this sort of perfect and say okay I want a guide here I want a guide here as the sort of start of my second column at 450 or 475 point. So, um, welcome to Charlie's Our Chocolates. Okay, so you, you get the idea. Our website is taking shape, by the way you need to save from time to time so this is a good time to save if you haven't done it already chalk in the chocolate site chocolate site okay oh there we have it mm. we'll just call it chocolate Okay, so Charlie's Chocolate Shop, we've done we've done the home page. Uh, next we'll turn to the about page. Uh, so let's move on now to the about page. Um, the second one. What sort of things would we put on the about page? It's, it's good to have uh, maybe an image of somebody involved. Uh, I've got a picture of a chocolatier here. So let's pop this guy in. Uh, typically we would expect to have some text so I'm going to go back in and grab this text field that we set up here and drop it in below or beside. This might be a place to put it beside. That's the size of my page. Uh, actually, I'm going to just change the paragraph alignment here to justified so that we get this nice clean edge. And rather than a welcome, we'll hit this with about Charlie's. Um, Sometimes it's nice to have a, a second image. I've got I've got a second image here of Chocolatier 2. It's, it's got a quite a nice horizontal look. So let me see, I might drop this in as a sort of smaller image here. And maybe even just crop it with the crop tool. So we, we get it really nice and tight like that. Uh, and then just line it up with the text, drop it down a bit, and shrink it in there. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to just hold down the Alt key and copy this guy down here. Uh, maybe I leave the heading in, or maybe I just make it uh, continue from one paragraph to the next. <clears throat> uh, what else could we put on our about page? Often an award is or something is nice. Now, I have an image here that has a whole bunch of uh, chocolate awards. Any of these would be nice to put on this page. Um, but I, I think we need to just 
take one. We, we don't want too many. Um, so I'm just going to open it up in Photoshop. And I think I'm just going to take this one here. So I'll just use my crop tool and cropping out. Uh, now here the white um, selecting the color range isn't going to work because it's going to select the white text which we want to be white. So here I would use the, the quick selection tool and just select the whites of the outside uh, and again just make a copy, turn off the background and hit backspace and then we should see that we have transparency and we can save this as awards dot you guessed it png so we've got some nice transparency now and back in muse let's place the awards dot png now we can just uh, place it over this one if we wanted to. Um, I'm thinking now to drop it in like this onto this photograph and maybe even drop this photograph down a bit so that we get it uh, maybe even in the corner sort of like an official stamp. Now I'm finding there's too much of this photograph on the side here that I don't need. So I'm just going to crop some of that over and then stretch him out. And that's that's a better image. Something like that. So you can see how I'm using the the arrow tool to scale it and the crop tool to crop the images until I get really what I'm what I'm looking for okay so that's my about page um, you know, you could put in some more images or text down the bottom here, but for me that's probably enough for the About page. Let's move on to the Gallery page. So let's have a look now at the Gallery page. So I've called it our chocks. Um, you may be given a, uh, a set of gallery images or you may have to construct a set of gallery images. For the chocolates example, I've got a, uh, an image here with a selection. and I, I want to turn this into um, a bunch of images. Let's say I'll take the, the top one, two, three, four, five, the top five images and turn them into a gallery image. Um, here's how I would do it. I would go in and make a size that I want to to use for these gallery images. So I've, I've got a, just like a fill here and a, a stroke and I'm just going to draw a box um, I'm going to set that transparency down to about 50% and just command T so I can adjust it. And that's about the size I need for these chocolates. So I'm going to position this one here and then just duplicate the layers. So on the second layer I'm going to move my document across and grab the 
second chocolate. So you can see how I'm doing this, right? Just putting each one, each layer inside the, the box. A bit of an edge there, so I might um, let's get rid of this one. I might just um, stretch that out a bit so I don't get the edge in my box. Nice. Um, One or two more. So again, the same thing here. I'm going to stretch this guy so that he sits nicely in the box. Okay, and um, yeah, one more. Okay, seems fine. Okay, so um, now that I've got them all there, I can just crop the image to the size of my box. nicely. All right, so there's my image. I can get rid of the rectangle now. I don't need it. And if I go through the layers. I've got a selection of images now. Uh, I can, I'm going to make these a bit bigger because the size of them is now only 190 pixels. I think well, I'll take those up to uh, 600 going to be, let's say, let's take it up to 600. They're not crisp and clear now, but for, for what we're doing, they're fine. Um, I'm going to export these. Let me show you a trick for turning these into JPEG. We can go export layers to files. And I'm just going to browse to a new folder called selection and <clears throat> the type will be JPEG everything else is fine so we'll just run that and it says the export to layers was successful and if we just go and check that we should see our images. Okay, let's put them onto our gallery page. You can use any of these widgets to present a, a gallery. I'm going to go with the thumbnails one because I like these having a nice set of thumbnails on my gallery. So here's the basic gallery. Let's add the images from the selection folder and <clears throat> then we'll just do a bit of basic customizing. I'm going to shrink this down so we just get one line of images for the selection. I'd like to maybe go a little larger here for the image. Stretch it out so we see our image a bit more. And I might put this caption at the top, I think. Uh, and really, I don't think I need these 
forwarding items. All I really want to do is to be able to click on each of these and see what I'm looking at. And here I can go in and adjust the, um, uh, the, the caption. Um, let's call this uh, Caramel Delight. And this one will be. Fudge King, and this one would be Raspberry Surprise. You get the idea. Um, fill. Do we? What do we do with the fill? Style it and uh, set the font. To be consistent. And uh, that's not looking too bad. I, I actually, I, I, I think I'd like to have a field that combines all of that. So I, I'd just like to put a, a box around here to sort of tie all that together. I'm thinking <clears throat> something like our Something like our brown, maybe a darker brown, something something like that. How's that look? That looks pretty good. Let's just see if we take it back. Command square arrow. What does that look like? Not bad. I might just go in and sort of shuffle these around a bit until they sort of line up a bit more nicely. Um, but you get the idea of, of how I'm setting up this gallery. Um, space, looks like it needs a bit of space down there. Um, <coughs> so that's pretty much it. We should check it that it works OK. So. Fudge King, Raspberry Surprise, Caramel Delight, and we can navigate between our pages. So everything seems to be working fine at the moment. So next, let's let's have a look at the contact page. And typically, typically on the contact page, we would want a uh, a form. So, so uh, with this form, let's go to the widgets library. Under forms, we have a detailed contact or a simple contact. I, I'm just going to use a simple contact form here, and we would email it to, you know, um, whatever is the, the the email for our company. In, info at Charlie shockshop.com or whatever the domain is um, and of course you would style this form um, I don't need to do all of this now uh, you would be using your font of your page you would be setting the color to an appropriate color um, you would be Again, here I might use a light italic. And again, setting that uh, 
and the, the colors also. So let's see, maybe if I pick up that pink and turn to a sort of whiter, lighter shade of pink. Setting the saturation towards white. Yeah, so, so you get the idea. Um, styling is important, and don't forget when there are multiple states. Um, you know to change the the states. It's gray here in the normal state. If we wanted to set that to the pink, that's fine. But remember. There's a bunch of other states as well, so we don't want to have gray stuff appearing as we roll over and submit your button. It should not be turning gray. Um, okay, that's sort of enough for the form. I would also use some text to put the form in context. So here I might say something like, um, let's get rid of, we don't need all of that, uh, maybe just, um, we love to hear from you, exclamation mark. And that just gives us a little introduction to the email form. Um, the other thing that you can always do on a <clears throat> on a contact form is maybe to have a, a physical a, a map showing the physical location of the of the business. So here I've just grabbed a Google map and I'm going to set the address to um, Dubai Mall. <clears throat> And the widget is lovely and intelligent and knows where we're talking about. I'm just going to size that there and maybe even use my text field again to put it in context. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you or come visit us. There we go. Let's turn now to the design page and what you might uh, put in there. Now I've already done some of this so uh, you know often with the design with any kind of style guide when you're commenting on your style you might make some General comments first, reflecting on the design. I would say here something like the site has a playful feel and that reflects the Charlie's brand. So it's it's chocolate, you know, we're not we're not talking banking here or or um, uh, sports, we're, we're talking chocolate. So there's this playful, nice to eat kind of feel that, that we want with the brand. Um, the color palette, okay, so we'd make a comment the color palette is made up of pastel pink, white, and chocolate brown. And it's usual to actually, you know, show the, the shades of the color. Here, if I was going to do the same with brown, I might just copy these. By the way, these are just uh, shapes, rectangle shapes that I've made in, in uh, Muse. These are not done in Photoshop. They're not um, JPEG images. They're just done with the the rectangle tool. Uh, so I'm actually just going to copy these and uh, I'll make a, the range of, of browns as well. Um, so actually, let me just do that again. So, yeah, I'm making those. Let me just select them all to start with and pick up our standard brown uh, and then maybe just take one at a time and give the range of tones so here's the dark brown here's a lighter version of the brown by the way if you don't have your HSB sliders you have a choice between the the red green blue or the HSB 
So I prefer to use the H, the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. And finally, something like that. So you know, this, this sort of allows us to see um, what we're doing here. By the way, I would probably just grab all of those, holding down the shift key and selecting them all, and uh, group them so that if you do want to shift that around or size it, then it's not a difficult task. Okay, so enough about the color palette. The typography, the fonts used are Big Fish for headings and Source Sans Pro for paragraph text. Big Fish has the playful feel that works well with the brand, but it must not be overused on the page. So this is a fairly standard comment for typography. Source Sans Pro has a whole family of variations, italic, light, black, and bold. When the text is less than 24 points, some spacing is introduced. Example, in the menu text, four point of spacing was introduced. Do you remember when we did that with the, the spacing, the horizontal spacing between the letters? Uh, I'm also showing the fonts there in the demonstration, and maybe that's enough for, for the time we have available. That's a summary of the design, some of the design choices you made. You could go into the layouts and how you, um, you know, chose the, the layouts, especially if you've done something interesting. To be honest, I haven't been very adventurous with my layouts, but um, you, you, you might uh, decide that's something you want to comment on. So the last page then is this um, code view where we're asking you to comment on the code. Now to get the code we need to go from Adobe Muse we need to export as HTML to produce the code. Now there's a warning has come up for me here and this might happen to you. This document contains a link to an asset being upsampled that is being enlarged. You should resize it smaller or right mouse click on the asset to see the other options. So, okay, I'm, so I'm, I can say okay there, and I'm, I'm just going to cancel that for the moment and have a look at that. In the assets, um, where's the the warning? Here it is. It's the it's the chocolatier um, JPEG, which I've used in the. Um, uh, the about page. Let's just have a look at that. The chocolatier. If we look at the size of this guy, he's at 110%, and they don't like that. Muse doesn't like that. It wants him to be 100%, uh, which means maybe I'll end up opening up a bit more of his. Maybe I will open up a bit more of his uh, image and slide him across. Then, okay. Now, now he's now he's at a hundred percent. There should be no problem. Let's just test that and try it again. Um, so, file export as HTML. Now I don't get the warning. Okay. Um, I'm going into my chocolate so I'm, I'm going to create a new folder here for the export. Don't do it in don't, don't export it just into your your um, where you've been working with your muse site. Create a new subfolder to export into. So I'll choose that and go export. And it takes a few seconds and it's generating all that HTML CSS and um, now it's giving me a warning here to say that the email address of info at charliechockshop.com which is what I put on the email form does not match the server name charlie.com some hosting providers refuse to send emails from an email address on different hosts so um, look probably I should have used the same name for both but um, for us it's not a problem. I'm just going to OK that now 
And what I can see in the finder is that this is the, the um, HTML and CSS that has been generated by Muse to make the site work. We've got CSS, we've got a global CSS, one for the master page, and then one for each page. That's the CSS pages. For the HTML, as you would expect, it's generated a HTML page for every one of our pages. And note, of course, that the home page, what we call the home page, is called index.html so that a server, a web server, knows that that's the page to load when you come to the site. Okay, so what do we put in our code page? I would suggest something like this. So we want to know that where it's a, a, just a comment introducing it. When we export the website from Muse, from Muse, a standard HTML, CSS, and JavaScript website is created. And we can show there, I've just done a screen grab here on the, the structure. Maybe a comment on the CSS style sheets. Muse creates a CSS style sheet for the whole site a master page CSS, and then a CSS for each page. And we could just go into the CSS folder and do command control shift four to get our grabber. And we could just grab that and paste that straight into, into our muse. Where is it pasted? over there. I'm not exactly sure. Let me try that again. Okay, so that's um, that's able to be sort of moved around here and I can put that where I want to put it. Um, CSS properties. Now, let me just arrange these down a bit. So, we might, you know, demonstrate that we know something about CSS by saying, in the CSS um, for the home page, we find the background property for the whole page is set to the BG pattern. Remember, this is our pink and uh, pink and and purple. Um, background image that we're repeating for the whole thing. So there it is. If we wanted to sort of find that, you know, what we're looking for are some examples. So it, if we went to um, the index um, CSS, for example, and open it up in Dreamweaver, um, then yeah, we can maybe see something like this, this background pattern. We might find other things that are interesting in here. You know, um, a user interface um, object that has sans, source sans pro sans serif or big fish. I'm assuming these are probably our, our menu items um, that are being defined with these uh, these styles. So this is what we're looking for here is can you you know locate a CSS property and describe it. Here's an example of, of something that you know defi is defined with the big fish uh, font. For the HTML well, let me just so all of these little screen grabs I've done are just by using Command Control Shift 4 and then pasting them from Dreamweaver's view of the code directly into Muse. Um, so in the HTML, okay, so in the HTML, um, I've found an image that's got my logo 
pasted onto the page and that was on my home page so again looking for the HTML I'm going into my index.html I'm going to open that with Dreamweaver here it is and I just kind of look around there's so much um, uh, scripts and div tags um, and then I finally kind of get to Charlie's Chocolate Shop, the home of great chocolate. So I could say, okay, there's the text in this div tag here. Is This is the text for my heading. Um, so this is kind of what we want you to do, is to be able to you know, grab a piece of, of text and say, that's a paragraph tag. Um, this is a link with the a tag uh, where was my image this is an image tag if you can show two or three examples that you know uh, what you're looking at there then that is enough for the code page so that's pretty much what we're expecting you to produce in this time so, um, yeah, I hope you found this tutorial useful and I wish you all the best for your upcoming exam skills test.